Hello and welcome to this tutorial on using waveform monitors in After Effects. Like the vector scope tutorial before it, many people don't realise that there are some very powerful and helpful waveform monitors built right into After Effects to help us to be able to correct things properly with empirical data from the graphs as opposed to just relying on our eyes, which as you probably know are highly unreliable when it comes to proper colour correction. So what I have here is a piece of footage. Now this piece of footage is courtesy of Adobe, which I can tell you now After Effects has interpreted incorrectly. It says it has a pixel aspect ratio of 1, and where actually I know this is anamorphic. I left it as this just to show you very quickly how to interpret the footage. If I was to grab this and drop it down to the new comp icon and let go, even if I click the pixel aspect ratio correction toggle box here down here, it looks very squished and looks completely wrong because the pixel aspect ratios are wrong. So I'm going to delete that composition. Hit delete, yes, I'm going to get rid of it. Now you select the footage and you click on this icon down here which is interpret footage and that raises a dialog box. And in that dialog box the issue that we're looking at is right at the bottom. We know that the frame rate's correct, we don't have fields, this is a progressive piece of footage, but what we do have is a problem with the pixel aspect ratio. After Effects has interpreted it as square pixels, where actually I know it is anamorphic 2 to 1. So if I click on anamorphic 2 to 1 and click OK, the footage has changed. We can actually see up here that it now says it's got a pixel aspect ratio of 2 to 1. And we can grab the footage and drop it into the new comp icon. And there we have it, a complete widescreen anamorphic view. Um, if it didn't look quite right, you would then need to click this toggle pixel aspect ratio correction box here to show the image properly. Now, just one look at this image shows you that the exposure is wrong, that something's wrong about this image. The brightnesses are all condensed into a very small area, and really, this isn't what we want. However, the other thing that I know about this image is it's that it is a 32-bit image. So it's an HDR image. So what we can do is we, we can all click on the PC, option click on the Mac, and set it to 32 bits per channel. And let's see, when we do some color correction, if we can't recover some of the images that were in here in these windows, which are blown out completely at the moment. OK, so how do we find these wonderful graphs? Well, we select the layer, and then we go to Effects, we go down to Synthetic Aperture, and we're straight back to Synthetic Aperture's Color Finesse 3, a wonderful and very powerful and completely free plugin that ships with After Effects. There is another product that you can buy from Synthetic Aperture called Test Gear, which will give you graphs that can float and actually be docked to the window so that you don't have to open this separate full interface and you can see things straight off. And if you use graphs a great deal and you rely on them in your work and you need to have them in After Effects, I would advise going to the Synthetic Aperture website and looking for test gear and perhaps having a trial run with that, maybe even buying it, so that you can use it in your interface and access those graphs all the time as opposed to constantly having to open and close the full interface. However, this is very powerful just as it is, so I'm just going to use Color Finesse 3. So click on the word full interface. The first time it loads, it always takes a little while, but after it's loaded once, it generally speaking loads a lot quicker the next time. And there we have it, the full interface. Now we have all our graphs shown over here, and we can select the ones we want to use. Previously we looked at the vector scope, we had a great understanding of that, and as you can see from the vector scope, the colours are very, very muted in this particular shot. But the ones that we're going to look at are the Luma waveform and possibly the YC waveform. The difference between the two is that Luma is just looking at the luminance value of the shot, whereas YC is looking at luminance, which is Y, and C is chrominance, and giving us a mixture of the two so we can see what the match is. Actually, in this particular tutorial, we're just going to look at the luminance range. The first thing we can see on this graph is there is a range, 0 to 100. Now, these are IRE, the Institute of Radio Engineers Scale. And it's a way that brightness has been measured for quite a long time. However, you need to know what system you're operating on. And for that, I want to take you to Edit Preferences. And when you get to the Preferences, I want you to actually look at the second and the third tab. The second tab is going to show the video colour system that you're working for. So if, say, you're working for an NTSC, does your system insist that black is at 7.5% or IRE at 7.5%? If so, you need to click that button. However, if you're in Japan, they also have NTSC, but their black is actually set at zero and not at 7.5%. Now, for me, I don't need 7.5%. I'm actually working in an HD version. The other tab is the third tab, WMF Oblique VS. And we have an option here that says Label Waveform Monitor in Millivolts. 
If you click on that and you click OK, you'll see that the scale changes. Now it depends what system you're operating for and it depends what you need, but you have the option to do both. I'm actually going to take mine to the IRE, so I'm going to click back to my preferences, uncheck that. And the last one is the one at the top here, it says display waveform monitor with picture colour. If I click on that and I click OK, you'll actually see that it's showing you the colours that are actually in this particular picture, which can be quite helpful for getting an idea of what's going on. Okay, so what am I looking at when I see this waveform, this LUMA WMF, the LUMA waveform graph? From left to right on this graph equates to from left to right in the image. So whatever is on the left of the image is showing on the left of the graph, whatever is in the right of the image is showing in the right of the graph, and in the middle and in the middle, and you can see here there's a light up here which is really bright, that actually would be this bit here. Because from bottom to top we have the darkest parts of the image and the brightest parts of the image. So where we have, say, a dark table over here, we've got a little bit of darkness on this table, you can see that we've got a really low dark reading, and it's showing me how dark it's going. It's nowhere near 0 or 7.5%, but this is the darkest point in the shot, and here's the darkest part of the image. However, the lightest part of the shot is probably here, possibly here, and some of these highlights around here, and you can see that they are shown here as highlights so this is about the brightness of the shot. You've got the darkest bits of the shot shown towards the bottom and the brightest bits of the shot shown towards the top. However, the range that I can go to is up to 100 and down to either 7.5 if I'm on the US system or 0 on other systems. Um, but I'm nowhere near that with this image, so therefore I need to make some corrections to bring back in a wider dynamic range of luminance so that this image is going to look a lot better. And I can use this graph to make sure I don't overdo it, because if I go above 100 with my brightness, I could end up causing blooming and over-brightness and looking very weird. And if I go below zero, I could cause other problems, because I'm producing an image with black points that go below the broadcast system, which can cause the broadcaster problems. So what we really need to do is click down here to where it says Levels, and actually analyse with these graphs what we have and see what changes we can make. Well, as soon as we click on levels, we have another really helpful graph. And this graph is telling us that this area of the shot has got no information in it whatsoever. And this area of the shot has got no information. So these darks have got nothing, and these lights have got nothing. So therefore, if I move the bright point, the point that says all pixels above this point must be pure white, into this area, it's not going to make any difference until I get to here. And likewise, if I move this point, which says all pixels below this value must be pure black, it's not going to make any difference until I get here, because there is no information. All the information is locked in the middle. So instantly I know I can take this black point and drag it to the beginning of the graph. And as I do so, do you see the way it pulls the image down, and it's pulling it towards that zero point? And then if I take the white point and I drag that to the beginning of the graph where the information is, you'll see that I get right up to the 100% point on the graph. And I'm just pulling it back to make sure I stick below 100% and I'm above zero. And look at the difference to the piece of footage already. Already this piece of footage has come to life. This is the source, this is the original, and this is the result, just by moving the input sliders. Okay, so now that we've made those changes, we can also play with the gamma slider in the middle. Now, as we move this gamma slider one way or the other, it is going to bias this shot. So it's either going to pull things towards the black, or it's going to push things towards the whites. But we still have the whole dynamic range. So let's play with that. Let's pull it down, and it's pushing things towards the whites and making them a lot brighter. However, we've still got some dark points which are darker than before. And if we pull it up, we're going to darken the shot and make it a lot more moody by pulling the information down towards the blacks. We can make it quite a lot more moody. Now, the only other thing that we can do which will make a significant difference is this wonderful new slider for Color Finesse 3. You might not have this in Color Finesse 2. And what you can do with this is you can, as it says, highlight recovery. Now, as I say, this is a 32-bit per channel image, and I've got completely blown out highlights here. Wouldn't it be great if I could recover some of the information in this area? So let's take this slider and let's just pull it right away to the other side and see what difference that's made. And as you can see, it's brought a lot of information back in that was lost before. Let's take it before and after. 
It's beginning to recover those highlights that were just blown out before. A wonderful little feature that Synthetic Aperture have added in. So, the original shot looked like this, and now we have changed it to this with very little work indeed, and we've been able to use this graph to be able to check out how it should look. Now note that when I use the Highlight Recovery tool, I actually pulled down the bright areas all the way down to 80, or thereabouts. However, I can still pull back some of this and pull it back up to 100, and I have still recovered some of the information in there and maintained a wide dynamic range, because if I take this slider all the way back down to nothing, you can see that the areas are still more blown out than when I take it up to full. So I've still been able to use the graph to get a better result, a much better result, including some highlight recovery by having access to this waveform monitor. Now there are other monitors, there's quite a lot of them that look at different colour spaces in different ways. I'd advise you to look through them. The YC waveform, as I say, actually overlays the chrominance information on top of the luminance information. But as I say, for this particular one, what we were looking at is the luminance information, which has helped us to colour correct this shot. And to apply it, all I need to do is click OK, watch the shot, and see the difference. So before, after. Before, after. And this doesn't stop me from now going into this shot and doing some other work to make it more moody, to add a tint, to do some other bits and pieces. But what I've done is increased the luminance range, recovered some highlights that have been completely lost and blown out before, and made the image far more usable and much more powerful. Well, I hope you found this useful. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.